Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, hopefully more people will stop hopping on as the music minutes go by. I cannot talk today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we just want to shout out Center for War Rule of Affairs for sponsoring our trainings. Um, we are super, super grateful to get to work with them. Man, my words are not coming out right. Um, our featured sponsor for this month's training is First National Bank of Omaha, so thank you to them. And then our featured member is Wessels Living History Farm, and they have actually been a member since 2018, so they're going on their fourth year um, this year, so that's super exciting. And then today we have Alyssa Bryant um, presenting for us, and she'll actually be at Market Tech as she has a breakout session. So if you haven't yet registered for Market Tech, be sure to, and you can meet her in person. Um, so Alyssa, if you want to go ahead and put up your presentation. Oh, you bet. Give me one second and I'll share my screen here. Hopefully you can talk better than I can. <laughs> I'm not going to make any promises. <laughs> it's right before holiday weekend, so we never know, but uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Uh, like Zoe said, my name's Alyssa Wyant. Um, a little bit about me before we get started. Um, I've been in the higher education industry actually for the last eight years. Um, and prior to that, I worked as a territory marketing management um, at a publishing uh, company. Um, I was a territory marketing uh, manager there traveling all around the United States. Um, I do have my master's degree in journalism and mass communications from UNL. Um, and as part of my positions uh, for the last 10 years, I've primarily worked in roles that included things like management, um, marketing, digital marketing, social media, um, enrollment management, um, some higher ed things you might not be aware of, um, but also things like copywriting and recruitment. So um, with that, um, I'm also the owner of Pen and Post. Um, and Pen and Post is a business, uh, we work with all different sizes of businesses in, in different industries um, to really assist them with things like marketing, uh, copywriting, social media, uh, digital advertising, and then consulting on their overall business. So Probably for the real reason you're joining me today is not to hear about me or my business, but um, to kind of take the next hour to talk through about how to streamline your business and how to effectively incorporate a project management system um, to stay organized. So this is something that not only changed uh, my work life uh, balance, it changed my professional life and really helped me to gain uh, some organizational skills. So we will go ahead and get started. I want to take you through really the start um, of a large management role that I was in a few years ago and really talk through what that looked like. Um, this was really me trying to manage the unmanageable. Um, this is a literal screenshot of my inbox at the time. It was so full of emails um, that at the time were meaningless emails or emails that maybe were no longer relevant um, that I was receiving because time had passed. It went on because I was unable to get to um, my email inbox because one, it was so clogged, but two, I was in meetings all day, unable to really um, get the full effect of what I, what I should be doing and clearing out my inbox. Um, I had no idea where projects were. I would kind of pop in and out of projects. Um, I knew probably what my employees were doing, but I didn't have a good grasp on daily things that they were completing. Um, and it became clear to me that we really needed something to get this under control. Um, what I was in real need of was that real-time synchronous communication um, with one another rather than email that would just sit and wait for somebody else to answer it. So it came to the breaking point and the breaking point uh, for me began March 1st of 2020. And I bet you can all guess what happened in March of 2020. Um, and yes, I know the exact date because the entire world was about to change. Um, I took over a department at a college campus that was directly responsible um, for online learning. And with that, uh, little did I know within a week of being responsible for this organization, the entire university would be sending not only their students home, but we were going to be sending faculty and staff home as well. Um, so I was left kind of trying to help my staff move 75 different faculty members 
that were teaching um, in the face-to-face -face environment to online. And I was in charge of the department that was going to do it. Um, I had also inherited 15 additional employees uh, that were gonna be working remotely for the first time ever. They had never worked remotely before. Um, so not only were there technical challenges, but there were also challenges of just how to manage remote employees. Um, and I think that's probably something we can all resonate with and probably struggled with during the pandemic. Um, hopefully for everyone, it's kind of leveled out, but that is the, the reality and possibility of the world going forward that we see more and more remote employees um, working with us. So I realized I needed two different things out of this. One was to understand exactly what my employees were doing on a day-to-day -day basis and keep them accountable. And two, um, keep our projects moving because literally the campus was depending on it. Um, the success of the campus and how we dealt with COVID-19 was really gonna determine what happened in our department if we were keeping things moving. So I needed a solution and I needed it fast. Um, the team I had managed before this had been using a system called Trello to really keep track um, of our projects. And at this time I had student workers that were constantly in and out. Um, and that was really the only way to stay up to date with what they were doing and where they had left things that day. Um, so I had taken this tool and implemented it across the board with my existing and new employees. Um, we rolled out Trello, which is a web-based project management system, and I absolutely love it. Um, I've been using it for several years now, but I loved it because I was able to provide me with the hands-off management approach that I really liked. Um, I want my employees and staff to feel like they're um, kind of elevated into that space where they know I trust them to get the job done, but also making sure that I have a finger on things and I know what things are getting done that we're meeting deadlines, not only um, now with pen and post for clients, um, but also with, with our university staff and things like that. Um, so it's nice to have that drill down approach as well and see what was really going on if I needed to. Um, it really also empowered the employees um, to have accessibility and accountability, um, making sure they were accountable. I'm sure that's also something that's really hard um, working as a remote employee for the first time. So there are a ton of different project management systems out there. You might've heard of them, or you might've seen them um, being advertised, things like monday.com, Asana. Um, there's a ton of different ones. I use Trello because it seemed to be the most user-friendly to me um, that I could implement quickly that people are gonna pick up on and really understand. Um, so along with the many platforms that they have, they all really have similar benefits. So taking a look at those benefits, obviously flexibility is one. Um, there's several different views that you can customize to your liking. If you like to see things in a calendar view, um, you can see things in a calendar view. I am more of a list person. I like to see things in a list format um, and you're able to do that in Trello as well. Um, since it's web-based, you can access this tool from a desktop computer, um, an iPad, your cell phone. Um, and for me, this was really handy because I'm constantly busy throughout the day. So adding things from my cell phone was very convenient. The other piece that I liked was when you wake up at 2 a.m. thinking about work, which we know we're not supposed to be doing, I was able to add tasks for me to complete the next day or something to chat with my team about the next day directly from my phone at 2 a.m. That was very helpful. Um, project management systems also obviously um, probably seem like you're gonna stop talking to your employees and that's definitely not it. In fact, one of the things I found was that it actually enhanced my communication. Um, and I think once implementing it, you'll see you're actually going to be communicating even more with your staff and even across teams that uh, you work with. So that was really kind of nice. It made everybody feel like they were part of the group and kind of know what's going on. The project management system also ensures accountabilities for your employees and yourself, which was very nice. And most importantly, what I loved the most and what was important to me for the solution that I found was that reduction in email. I was no longer getting emails that were asking questions about projects. I was getting emails that were most of the time outside of the department that I was working in or from my boss that I needed to answer. And it wasn't emails like, okay, I'll go ahead and get that started. It was meaningful emails that needed a resolution from me personally. So going into Trello, it's really key that you understand the hierarchy of the system. Um, 
first there's the board. Um, the best way that I like to describe this is to think of it as an individual notebook. Um, within the board, there are lists. So using that notebook analogy, um, we see lists as individual pages of the notebook. Um, and then there's something that we would call the card. Um, cards, um, again, using that same analogy, cards would be the lines of the notebook. Um, and if that all just went in one ear and out the other or over your head, stay with me because we will look at this um, together. So I am going to provide you with a little tour of Trello and we will go over that. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen quick and we'll get over to that. And then I will go ahead and reshare with you. All right, let's make this a little bigger so you can actually see the full effect here. So when we look at this, um, this is going to be your homepage um, when you come into this. Uh, the free version of Trello, you will allow for um, 10 different boards. I obviously have plenty remaining in the free version, and the free version works for me right now. Um, at some point, as I add more people onto my team, as I add um, different things or I want different power-ups, which we'll talk about later, I might want to add, add more boards or I might want to enhance to the paid version. Um, but for the simple basics of it, this is really a free tool that's there for you to use. Um, so the board really represents a place to keep track of information. Often this is used for things like larger projects. Um, maybe you have certain teams that are working on specific projects um, or it could be for a certain workflow. So I'm gonna go into the board that I've already created. Um, it's called Trello Training, very original. Um, the thing that you see here and all of these little things are called lists. Um, and lists, again, are really to keep cards organized um, or specific tasks of information um, during various stages of the progress. So lists can be used to create workflows um, that can be moved kind of across the board. That's what I've done here, and I'll explain that. Um, or it can act as kind of a place to just keep track of ideas, um, things you may want to do, things that might be, we always had a, a going wish list of things we wanted to do, but we didn't have the capacity to do them. Um, but we wanted to remember because they were great ideas. So lists are great for all those types of things. But in this specific example, what I've done is really create a workflow. Um, and this is the piece that I think helped us keep the most organized and keep on our radar what there was to do and who was doing it. Um, the smallest but most detailed unit of a board is the card, and these little individual things are called cards. Very simple to make. Um, this is a card. <laughs> um, you can just go in and name it to whatever you want. Typically, I would use um, whatever project title you were going to create, and the card can be added. So as you move it through um, the workflow process, it could go in your to-do, it could move through doing, and then when it's done, um, I also always had columns for on hold or questions. Usually this was not for myself, but um, either questions my team had to ask me or questions that I needed to ask my boss. Um, so that was always very helpful. Um, so on the right side of your Trello board is also um, the menu. This is really the mission control center. We'll get into this in detail, but um, well, we can actually do it right now. So if you look at kind of the mission control or think of this as the mission control, this would almost be um, like in a book, the table of contents, kind of telling you about the board. Um, you can go in and see who your board admin is, um, which is helpful, especially as people move and go on to different positions, you need to replace that board admin. Um, and then you can add a description for what your board should be utilized for. Um, so in this example, I would have added like this board should be uh, utilized for maybe onboarding and training new employees. So I would add that. Everyone knows that that's what this board's for. We do have the option to change backgrounds. You can do a fun photo of whatever you want, or you can change it. Today, we'll, we'll just change it to this funky blue color. Um, you can customize it too if you want to um, do like a customized photo or something like that. You can do that as well. So a lot of customization features, which are nice. Um, the other thing, custom fields is obviously an upgrade. And anytime there's a paid version, it will show you that it is a paid version. Um, there's also stickers. You can see I've added one here. It's very easy. You can just drop and drag um, to the project or the card that you're wanting to add it on. Typically, we would use stickers for things like templates, um, and I will show you how to create a template as well. 
um, but that will help um, as we do that, that you know what that is. When you go ahead and click into more, there's a variety of different things. We do have settings, so you can change um, the workspace, which would be like moving your notebook from um, where it's at into a different workspace. So if I wanted it to be with Grow Nebraska, I would move the workspace over to Grow Nebraska versus Pen and Post. Um, there's a variety of different things here, add or remove permissions. You can set different permissions for different members, um, et cetera. There's also things called labels. Now labels are something that I utilized quite a bit um, in all my positions, but each of these is nice because you can go in and create a label. If you want to just see your marketing projects and tag them, you can say marketing. Um, this one, we'll just go ahead and do sample. So you can see what it does. It adds the keyword sample. And then if I actually go in and click, I can see exactly what these are. Um, if I can't remember what the, the uh, label is that I created. Another thing that is nice is you can go in and look at archived items. Usually, oops, sorry. Usually when I was done with a project, when we had this in a done uh, column, I would maybe go in and archive the card because I'm done with the card. So I'm gonna archive it. And when we go into archived items, you'll be able to see that this is actually the archived card. So it was a nice way to keep track of maybe what you had done for the year or things, um, but not keep it on your radar of things that, uh, to do to kind of really junk up your board. Um, if you accidentally archive, which I've done before, um, just go ahead and click send a board and it sends it right back to where it should be. The other thing that I love is email to board settings. This actually creates a customized email address that you can add. Um, you can email, forward an email into Trello, which is nice. So if I copy this and go into uh, my Gmail account, this will be nice. I'm gonna just um, go ahead and forward this um, from Zoe about our event today into Trello. And I'm gonna show you what it does. It might take just a second, so we will keep going. But I do wanna let you know um, when this does come in, um, you can also add add-ons. Like if you are on Outlook, you can add kind of a push to Trello. So it will automatically pop up um, when, uh, like with a button that you can just push the whole email there. So you can see this came in right here. It says, I have a reminder that this webinar is happening today. And if I click on it, all the information from the email is here. Um, it will also include things like attachments. So if somebody has sent you an attachment, it's there. Um, so that's a really quick and easy way to save time or just go ahead and push things to your team as they're coming in. Um, the other thing that I like is this watch feature. When you click this watch feature, it's going to send you email notifications as well um, with anything on the board that you need to, to keep in mind, which is nice. Um, copy board, you can do a, an exact replica of this board if you want to, you just go ahead and click on copy. And then the other thing that I use quite frequently is the print and export. Um, I'm kind of a list maker. So when I have this list and I, I like physically want to check off my to do's or cross them out, or at least show myself that, I, that the things that I've accomplished, um, I will print it out and export it, um, into like a PDF and just cross it out. The other thing that's great is the link to board. So if you need to reference back to a team member, maybe that it's a project that's located on this board, you can just copy it and it gives them a link directly here. Okay, so now that we've gone through that, I want to take you through, um, because the board's set up, we're gonna go through the cards so you can kind of see the unique card features. Um, first, I'm going though to tell you up here, um, this little bell, this is kind of your settings notifications. And then this bell is actually going to give you kind of a new speed of what's been going on. Um, if we filter by unread, I don't have anything. So that's really nice. Um, you can also, um, allow for desktop notifications. So it automatically pops up. So if we go in and I'm going to just add a card, a sample card. We would again name it like the name of a project. Actually, maybe let's do social media post. And in this, we are going to say that we are going to do a social media post uh, promoting Marketech. Um, and we'll hit save. Actually, let's edit that. We want this to be a video. Okay, so we're going to create a video social media post for Marketech. 
Um, the thing that I love about this, you can go ahead and add the member that's responsible. So I'm going to say that I'm responsible for that. And it will trigger me that I just got assigned to a new card. I will put the social media label that we created on there. And then another feature that I love is the checklist feature. This is gonna go in and add a checklist. Now this is one I've already created just for the ease of this presentation, but we're gonna hit add. And this is gonna kind of go through kind of the steps it would take to like create a post. So I've brainstormed the post, I know what I wanna post, and then it's gonna give me like a progression. So once I get to all of these, it's gonna say 100%, which is nice because I can see at any time where that project is at. Um, and then I'm gonna set a due date. So I'm gonna say, I want it posted next week at 1222. You can do specific times. Normally I leave these for five o'clock because that's the end of our work day. Um, but if the end of someone's work day is at 4 p.m., you can always edit that. So this is gonna give me the due date reminder. Um, I can add any attachments. So let's go ahead and add an attachment. Um, I actually have Markitech's booklet here that I'm going to add. This is from last year, so you don't get any sneak peeks, but it's there. Um, and actually for someone to download this, they can just go ahead and click this little arrow. You can also comment on this and people are knowing that you're referencing that booklet because it's documenting that you're referencing the attachment. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the arrow though. It's gonna download over here in the corner and I can go ahead and pull it up from there. I can also add a cover if I want to add a cover to this. Like if we're gonna do all of our social media posts in orange, we can do that. Um, I don't use covers because I have labels. I don't really need the additional, um, the additional, I guess, aesthetic, um, but you can do that if you want. Um, there are power-ups and I will show you what a power-up looks like here in a second. And then there's all these other lovely um, actions that we can do. So if we need to move the card, I can select exactly where this should go. Like if I need to go this on another board or maybe I want it on this, but I want it on the to-do column, okay? And I want it in position one. I'm gonna click move and we're gonna go to this and it's right here. Super simple way to, to move it, but you can also drop and drag, which is easy too. You can also copy a card. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the template is what I really like. If you select that it's a template, it will mark it at the top. Um, this is a template card, okay? And when you do that, you can say create a card from template. So say we have another social media post, and now this one is going to be a uh, Markitech focus, uh, let's say image. Okay, and I can tell it, I want it to keep the checklist, I want the label, I want the member and the attachment, because that's all going to be the same. Actually, no, we don't want the attachment, so we're going to create the card. So it just created this card for me, everything's the same, it's cleared out the checklist, so we can start over like it's a brand new project. Super simple and easy way to create um, a brand new card off of a template, and it saves you time. And the thing that I like is you're not missing steps that could be important to you later. Now, I will note um, these little icons you see over here. This is part of the paid feature. Um, what I like about it, though, if you do uh, choose to go ahead and invest in the paid feature, um, you can assign individual members. Oh, sorry, now I got into that individual members into each task, and you can set a specific due date for them on when they need to get that task done in order to see the full completion of the project. Um, the other thing that I utilize a lot, I encourage my team to utilize is to watch. You can watch this and then anything, there we go, when it's checked like that, it's watched. Anything that happens on this card, whether it's a comment, an attachment being added, you uh, will be able to go ahead and uh, get an email notification that that's going on. Hide from list will hide it from your list. Delete will obviously delete the card and share. You can actually share this card. Again, if you have um, maybe an employee asking if this has been created, you can say yes, copy and paste this link and show them where the card is at. So when we have these cards, um, a couple of the things that I mentioned, and I'm going to go over this toolbar up here. Um, when we go through, so again, the menu part is your kind of home navigation. Um, filter is probably something that I use most often. Um, we would use this if we had different teams or different types of projects. I'm just gonna pull everything for social media that we're doing at this moment. And these are all different social media projects based on the filter or on the label that I have uh, put it on 
to each card. You can also do it by due date. Maybe you just wanna see cards that are assigned to you. Um, let's go ahead and take this off and see all of them. So now I can see it in a different view. So that's what I'm talking about when I tell you that this is so flexible and it can really kind of perform the way that you want it to perform and customize it to each unique employee and how they work. Um, other things, if you, I mean, you can always create more labels, due dates, all of that. Um, the thing that I think that is probably the most complicated and where we start getting a little bit confused or overwhelmed is when it comes to power-ups and automation. And that's part of the reason I've saved it for last. Um, because when we do talk about that, um, there's different things that um, feel overwhelming, but they're really not. So when we talk about automation, we can do several different things. If you want a weekly report, um, like a summary of all cards that are gonna be due, um, that's a great example that they have listed. You can do that. Um, you can create customized but buttons on the back of each card or at the top of the board. So what they're talking about when they talk about the back of a card, this would be considered the front. And then when you click on it, this is considered the back. So they would create customized buttons that, that you could add. Um, some of those might be um, assigned to me. That might be a customized button that you would add. The other things that I think is helpful are rules. I'll go actually into that. Um, rules are gonna be something that you um, do. So if something, this is gonna be done automatically. So if you add a card, you could automatically say anything in the to-do list assigned to me. Or if you have, to have a designated person that you kind of want to run point on those, you can automatically do it. Um, it will kind of walk you through that and it will go on um, to say like create a button. So we can do that. Um, all of that is done through this automation tool. Um, and then the other thing that I probably use the most is power-ups. Now, power-ups um, are enhancements that you make to your board um, that allow for more functionality. So one of those things is this calendar power-up. Like I said, you can see it in a monthly view. They do it in a weekly view. So I know what's due this week, next week. Um, or if you have maybe things that you need to remember, like you want to map out all the events that are going on for your business. Um, this is a great way to do it because you can navigate it that way. The other thing that I like is this, um, this is called Board Sync Genius. I have also um, typically used something called Unito, um, but what that is, is it syncs the board. So if I want to have a board that's kind of a master project list, and then I want one just for myself or just for one employee so I can see what they're working on on a day-to-day -day basis, but I want anything that's done on the cards to simultaneously sync, um, that's when I would use the sync uh, genius or the Unito. You can explore all the different power-ups if you just click here um, and you can just say add power-ups and it's gonna go in and show you all the different power-ups. And when I say there's a ton, there's literally one, I think for everything. Um, there's file management, there's things for utilities, marketing, all sorts of different things that are very uh, capable. These are just typically ones I've used in the past is the calendar power-up and the sync power-up. Um, I try to keep it simple so my employees aren't overwhelmed. So I'm not overwhelmed. And so we can really kind of keep the ball rolling and keep projects moving. So um, I believe that is all um, that I have to show you. Let me share my presentation again, because I've got a couple more slides here that I do want to share. Okay, let me make this a little smaller so you don't have to look at everything. All right. So types of boards that you might utilize, I try to give some um, ex like specific examples just so you kind of understand different things you might create with this tool. So one is the project board. That's what I just showed you. Um, I mentioned the individual employee boards. So you can kind of keep track of what your employees are working on on a daily basis. Um, the other is an onboarding board. This is something that I did have um, that I usually set up just so we have something for new employees to do to kind of go through on their first day. This might include things like your employee handbook. It might include um, like your mission statement, 
um, things like that that are pretty basic things but are probably really important for new employees to know. Um, I do think that that was something that was nice to build out because we realized that one, either things were maybe outdated or two, that we needed to tell employees something that we hadn't thought of before. So that was really nice to see. Um, the other was kind of a resource board, or this might be like a branding board. So if you have um, certain um, branding uh, things that you want people to use, like this might be your logo or something that always is supposed to go on social media, that it's a great place to house it um, instead of having to resend files multiple times because people can't find it. Um, Meeting boards, um, I did have a meeting board with all of my staff that they could just go ahead and add to, and we would use that as kind of an agenda. We would also take notes in that. So if someone was out, um, we could go ahead and look and see um, previously kind of what they missed. And then the last thing that I mentioned as well was an events board. Any events that we would host throughout the year, they would be able to see that. We could keep track of the progression of that and so forth. So. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, implementing a project management system, like I said, it really did uh, change my work life. And I hope that this maybe will help you as well. Um, at this time, I think we're gonna open it up for questions or comments. Um, so feel free to ask away. Okay, I believe there is one question so far. I just saw that. Um, how do you add team members to the board and can team members do editing to the boards? So let me um, pull up Trello again and I will share my screen with you so we can see that. All right. So to add members to the board, you would actually just click share. I guess I didn't even cover that, so I'm so sorry, but you would actually just click share um, and then like, I don't know if I have Zoe in here. There she is. Um, I could just add Zoe to this board and click share. Um, what that does is it actually sends her a link and she just, it says, Zoe, you've been added to this board. Go ahead and click accept to join the board. Um, I can also do it with a link. So I've had people in the past that missed the email. I mean, that's a very common thing to do. Um, and uh, I need to do the link. So I'll just say, copy the link. And then I can just copy and paste it in an email. Super easy to add people to it. Um, another question was asked about, can team members do editing to the boards? Um, team members can do editing to the boards. So team members would have the capability to like change this to, um, maybe you have like a funny employee that's like not doing this. Okay, and they can change that, yes. Um, you can, I believe, edit the settings. So in this menu uh, kind of control mission, um, when you hit more, I believe you should be able to go into settings and change this. So commenting permissions, add remove permissions, I believe it would be under this. Um, but yes, unfortunately, I think they can still maybe do this. When we talk about adding and removing people, I believe it would be from like a shared perspective of sharing the board. Um, so they would be able to do that, unfortunately. Um, another question, is this used alongside products like Microsoft Teams or instead of? Um, so the way that I've utilized this, um, when we were when we had moved into the remote environment, um, I did use uh, something similar to Teams. I actually used the Zoom chat. Um, and the reason I did that, and unfortunately can't, I can't show you because Zoom actually hides all the features when you're presenting. Um, but when I use the Zoom chat, I used it because I could actually see if my employees were online or not. Um, I, like I said, I didn't hire all of these employees. So um, unfortunately, I, you know, I couldn't keep track of them, um, but it does show when they're online. It also tells me if maybe they're online, but they're using their cell phone instead of their actual laptop. So we use that as kind of a chat feature. We use this as a project management feature. Um, like I mentioned though, it does have the capability. Um, you can add power-ups. Um, I don't know if you would call them power-ups, but um, something similar to a power up in your Microsoft Outlook that would push um, anything that you want into your Trello board. So in that instance, yes. Um, okay. 
Yes, um, this person's asking, can you upload documents to a project for multiple users to access? Yes, um, so that is exactly what this is doing. So anybody that has access to this board, um, and I'll just do this again, we'll just delete this and I can redo it for you. So um, we had just said add attachment. And if you, I mean, you can do it from anywhere, Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, OneDrive. Um, I'm just gonna do it from my computer for the sense of ease. Um, and I'm gonna upload this. And now anybody that has access to the board and the card um, or anybody that's put on that project can actually just go ahead and click this little arrow. It's gonna download that in the corner of my screen. You can see it's downloaded. And if I open it, it's gonna open it so they can see the full file. Um, and then the other piece is um, you can also comment. So if you hit comment, it's gonna say, Alyssa's referencing this. Um, I'm gonna say, Zoe, did you make all the changes? And then Zoe would get a notification if she was on this board, I would just add her. Oh, she's not a member of the board, so I can't. But if she was, I would just add her and go ahead and mention her. Um, and she would get a notification for that. How does a Trello calendar sync with a Google calendar? Um, I'm not sure. I'm guessing there's probably a power up for that. Um, the calendar power up. Um, just gives you like the calendar view. If you go into power up though and hit add power ups, um, Google Calendar, Trello two way sync. Yes, sync cards, events, boards, and calendars with Trello and Google. You do have an integration for that, um, which, in my opinion, it's worth the additional dollars. It is not that much to have a system like this. Um, and it is. I feel like it's changing not only for you as a manager, but also for your employees. Um, anything you can share by the way of pricing, is it price per user or price by platform? It is price by user, I believe. And actually to find that, we can look at that today if you'd like. Um, you just go up into this little info button if you're on the free version, hit pricing, and it's gonna take you to that. So this is the free version, it's obviously $0. Um, $5 per user per month if it's billed annually, um, $6 billed monthly if it's billed on a monthly basis. Um, but you have access to most things. You have unlimited boards, um, advanced checklists. So that advanced piece was when we had talked about, um, let's see, when we went into the checklist and said marketing checklist and hit add, it's actually gonna give you the option to add team members and due dates behind that. So for the $6, I, I would say it's worth it. Um, custom fields, unlimited storage, that is um, a big plus because you can run out of storage with that. If you're storing large files, like design files would be something I would be cautious of. Um, a thousand workspace command runs per month and then single board guests and saved searches. Um, what I had typically used, I believe that we were on premium. So teams up to hundred that needed to keep track of multiple projects and visualization um, work in a variety of ways. Uh, that is nice, but you can kind of cross compare what is and isn't included, um, but it is worth the money uh, for the $10 per user per month. I know it can probably get expensive if you have a lot of employees. And if that's the case, I would just stick to the standard $5. But um, if you're okay shelling out the money for something that's gonna be effective and something that your employees are gonna be using every day, um, in, in my mind, it's worth it. Um, another question, can admins see tasks that are past due or not complete if a due date is set for the members? Yes. Um, so again, this view is the same view that you're seeing that I would see that anybody would see as long as they're added to this board. And actually they don't even have to be a member of this board if, okay, let's give you an example. So if something, if I came in and something was past due, um, I would go into my board and be able to see that this is not, this has not been done. Somebody is falling behind on this and we need to address this uh, specific task of what they have. Um, the member is also notified when a project is coming due, they are notified, I believe the day before. And actually you can add this as well um, to make sure that you're watching it. 
to make sure it gets completed. So if you go in and you see that it is overdue, you can add the watch button and that's gonna make sure that you get an update every time this card is touched and somebody's adding to the project. Okay, I'm not seeing any additional questions. Um, Zoe, anything on your end? Um, I just have a few announcements. Let me share my screen. Oh, maybe. There we go. Okay, so thank you all for joining our training today. And thank you to Alyssa for taking time out of your day to present about Trello. Um, I know I learned a lot because I knew nothing about it, but as we're using it for Market Tech, I really needed that information. Um, so if you have any questions, you can contact me at the store phone number or shipping. Well, it's actually zoe at grownebraska.org now. Um, and then we have upcoming training. So be sure to be on the watch for our June 16th webinar training to be posted. Um, you can find it on our socials um, once we get it up on our site, or you can just go to grownebraska.org and find it there. And then we have our Grow with Google series. Um, our next one is on June 1st, and it's all about how to make your website work for you. And this is available in Spanish and English. Um, the English is from 12 to 1 p.m. and the Spanish is from 6 to 7. So if you haven't registered yet for those, um, check our social medias or go to grownobraska.org. And then we also have Marketing Monday Tips, which is where we go live on Instagram. Our Instagram is at by Nebraska at noon every Monday with Caitlin Pye of Authentic Branding. And she's also a Grow Nebraska member. Um, but this next Monday, since it's Memorial Day, we will not be live. So be sure to check back the next week as we will be. And then Market Tech Conference, um, make plans to attend our engaging digital marketing conference in Kearney, Nebraska on June 22nd. Um, as I said, Alyssa will be there, I will be there, and so many other um, creative and innovative people will be there. So um, if you have any questions regarding that, you can reach out to any Grow Nebraska member and we will um, supply you with the additional information or help you get registered. Um, so I think that's everything. So I hope you guys have a great um, Memorial Day weekend. And yeah, thanks for tuning in.